I've taken this problem from chapter 4 of the Chemistry and Chemical Reactivity book by Kotz, Trichel, and Townsend, and I've done it with their permission. So let's do this, this example. A 1.034 gram sample of impure oxalic acid is dissolved in water in an acid base indicator with and an acid base indicator added. The sample requires 34.47 milliliters of 0.485 molar sodium hydroxide to reach the equivalence point. What is the mass of oxalic acid, and what is its mass percent in the sample? So before we even break into the math of this, let's just think about what's happening. We have some oxalic acid, which looks like this. It's really kind of uh, two carboxylic acid groups joined together, if that means anything to you. Watch the organic chemistry playlist if you want to learn more about that. So we have a double bond to one oxygen, and then another bond to a hydroxide. And we have that on the other carbon as well. This is oxalic. This right here is what oxalic acid is. And it's an interesting acid because it can actually donate two protons. This proton can be nabbed off, and this proton can also be contributed. And it's actually resonance stabilized. If that doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry. You'll learn more about that in organic chemistry. But the important thing to realize here is that there's two protons to nab off of it. There are two protons to nab off of it. Now, each molecule of sodium hydroxide or we could, when you when you put it in the water, it really just uh, 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 dissolves, and you can really just think of it as hydroxide. Each molecule of hydroxide can nab one of the hydrogen protons. So for every one molecule, so for every one molecule of oxalic acid, you're going to need. Let me just. For every one molecule, you're going to need two hydroxides, one to nab this hydrogen proton, and then another one to nab that hydrogen proton. So let's just draw the balanced, let's write down the balanced equation that we're dealing with here. So we're going to start off with some oxalic acid. So that has two hydrogens. So it's H2, two carbons, and then four oxygens, O4. It's dissolved in water, so it's an aqueous solution. And to that, we're going to add sodium hydroxide. Sodium sodium hydroxide. Now I just told you that you're going to need two of the hydroxides to fully neutralize the oxalic acid. So you're going to need two of them. And this is also in our aqueous solution. And once the reaction happens, this guy will have lost both of the hydrogen protons. So let me draw that. So it will look like this. No more hydrogen. So it's C2. O4, it'll have a negative 2 charge. And actually, it will. Uh, you can imagine that it might uh, be attracted to the positively charged sodiums, and two sodiums in particular. So this has a negative 2 charge. We could even write it there if you want. 2 minus. And then you could have the sodiums over here. You have these two sodiums that have a 2 plus. This entire molecule becomes neutral. They are attracted to each other. They are still. They are still in an aqueous solution. And then the hydroxide nabs the protons, and then you are left with just water. So plus two moles, plus or two molecules, depending on how we're viewing this, plus, plus two waters. And we could write it, and I'll just use that same orange color, plus two H2Os. One of these hydrogens are coming, or uh, one of the, uh, one of the hydrogens in each of the water molecules are coming from the oxalic acid. And so two of these hydrogens in these two moles of the water are coming from one entire molecule of oxalic acid. Now, let's actually do the math. We have 34.47 milliliters of the solution that has the sodium hydroxide. And I'm just going to convert that to liters just so that it's easier to deal with the molarity right over there. So we have. 34.47 milliliters, milliliters, we could write it of this solution, but we understand that that's the case. So let's just multiply, or actually divide. So this is times, this is times, we have one liter, one liter for every thousand, for every thousand milliliters, and then this will give us. The milliliters cancel out. 34.47 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.03447 liters of this 
0.485 molar sodium hydroxide solution. So let's figure out how many actual molecules of sodium hydroxide we have. This is the solution, and we know its concentration. It's 0.485 molar. Let me do that in a different color. 0.485 molar. This information allows us to figure out the actual molecules of sodium hydroxide. So we want to multiply this by, we have, we have point, we have 0.485 moles, moles of sodium hydroxide for every, for every. One liter of this solution. That's what that. That's what the molarity tells us. We have 0.485 moles per liter. So the liters cancel out, and then now we're going to actually have to get a calculator out, and this will tell us how many moles of sodium hydroxide we have in this solution. So let me get my my calculator. There we go. All right. Let me just multiply these two numbers. So we have 0.03447. Times times 0.485 is equal to. Let me put this down here. 0.167. And we only have actually with the the we only have three significant digits here, so we're going to round to three significant digits. So we'll just go with 0.0167. So let me let me move that over off the screen. So this is going to be equal to. Let me. This is going to be equal to 0.0167, and all we have left here are moles of sodium hydroxide. Moles of sodium hydroxide. Now, what we want to do is we know that this many moles of sodium hydroxide are going to completely react with however many moles of oxalic acid we have. Now, we know that we need two moles of this for every mole of oxalic acid, or for every mole of oxalic acid that, re that completely reacts, we need two moles of this. So let's write that down. Let's write this down in a new color. So times, we need two moles. Two moles of sodium hydroxide. We got that from our balanced equation right there, and you can it's kind of obvious it needs this. It needs one mole will, or one molecule will take this proton, and then you need another molecule to take that proton. So we need two moles of sodium hydroxide for every one mole for every one mole of oxalic acid for every one mole of H2C2O4. So we essentially are just going to divide this number by two. Let me get the calculator back. So we're just going to divide 0 0.0167 divided by 2, divided by 2. Once again, three significant digits, 0 0.00835. So this is going to be 0 0.00835 moles of oxalic acid, H2C2O. Four. So we have the number of moles, but we need to figure out the mass. And we know the molar mass of oxalic acid. We know that carbon, let me write these down. We know that hydrogen has a molar mass. Let me, let me write it this way. Molar mass, molar mass. If you have a mole of hydrogen, it has a molar mass of one gram. If you have, and this just comes from its atomic weight, if you have Carbon, its molar mass, if you have a mole of carbon, its molar mass is 12 grams. And if you have oxygen, its molar mass, molar mass is 16 grams. So what's the molar mass of oxalic acid? Well, we have two hydrogens, so that's going to be two grams, right? Two times one gram, that's the hydrogens there. We have two carbons, so it's going to be plus 24 grams. 12 grams for each of these carbons. And then we're going to have four oxygens that weigh in, if we have a mole of them, at 16 grams. So that's going to be plus 64. So what does this come out to? 24 plus 64. 24 plus 64 is 88. Is 88, right? 2 plus 6 is 8, right? It's 88 plus 2 more is 90 grams. Is 90 grams. So it has a so oxalic acid, if you had a mole of oxalic acid, it would be 90 grams. So we could say 90 grams per mole of C2, C2, I should write the H first, of H2C2O4. So let's go 
go back to the math here. So we had, I'll rewrite it over here. We had, we know we're dealing with 0 0.00835 moles moles of oxalic acid, H2C2O4. And now we know it's molar mass. We know, we know that there are 90 grams, 90 grams. Let me do this in a different color. This color is getting monotonous. We know that there are 90 grams of H2C2O4 for every mole, for every one mole of H2C2. This is its molar mass. So now we just multiply this number, and we'll figure out the grams of oxalic acid. That and that cancels out. And then we just take the number that we had and multiply it by 90. So times 90. This just says the previous answer, which is the number of moles of oxalic acid times its molar mass will tell us the grams of oxalic acid. So we get 0.75. I'll just round it to 2, since we only have three significant digits. And actually, well, this might, even the 90 isn't exact. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, but I'll, I'll just round to three significant digits. So 7.752. So this is equal to, this is equal to 0 0.752 grams of oxalic acid, H2C2. And I think we've answered part of the question. So the first question is, what is the mass of oxalic acid? We've just answered it. That answer right there is 0 0.752 grams. Now the next part is, is, what is its mass percent in the sample? Well, the sample of impure oxalic acid right over here was 1.034 grams. So we just have to say, what percentage is 0.752 of 1.034? So let's get the calculator back. So we have the 0.752 divided by 1.034. And we get 72.7%. 72.7%. So the second answer, the answer to the second part, right over there is 72.7%. We were able to figure out that this impure oxalic acid sample is 72.7% actual oxalic acid.